Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video, and I want to welcome you to another episode. This week's episode has a special theme, a theme that I will not reveal to you right now. I will allow it to unfold over the course of this recording. With that said, let's get to the blog post. This first blog post actually takes a look at a very curious phenomenon that is associated with Camilla Khan. And I honestly, off the top of my head, cannot think of a similar situation that exists, but maybe you can. So down in the comment section, I definitely want to encourage you to leave your thoughts behind. But specifically, what our blogger looks at in this post is a situation in which the cameo appearances of Camilla Khan are actually at a higher value than her first full appearance. And again, I can't think of another situation off the top of my head that is similar to this one. Uh, so maybe you can. The blogger in the post takes a look at two cameo appearances and then compares both of them in terms of value to her first full appearance. And Camilla's very first cameo appearance was in Captain Marvel issue number 14. And this is the variant edition from September 2013. The FMV of a CGC 9.8 copy of this variant will actually set you back about $3,700. And what's interesting is that according to the CGC census, there are only about 49 copies of this book on the census. So we are talking about a panel of a character in a book, and this is going for $3,700. That is a lot of money for a cameo appearance. But let's look at Camilla Khan's second cameo appearance, which happened to be in Captain Marvel issue number 17. And this is the second print variant from January of 2014. In this issue, Camilla appears on one page, page number 30 in this book, and we actually see her from behind. We don't see her face, we literally just see her from behind. And according to Go Collect, the FMV of this book at a CGC 9.8 will set you back $2,300. Now what's interesting about this book is that there are about 438 copies of this book on the CGC census and it has actually seen an increase in value of about 54%. Again, cameo appearances in the thousands of dollars when we're not really able to make out the character. It is really interesting, especially when you contrast it to her first full appearance, which happened to be an all new Marvel Now point one issue number one from March of 2014. In this book, we actually get Camilla Khan's first full appearance. And this book at a CGC 9.8 has a value of only $750. And here, this book shows up on the census to the tune of around 1,100 copies. But again, you're talking a few hundred dollars for her first full appearance and the cameo appearance in the thousands of dollars. This is a very, very interesting case. And again, I'd definitely be interested to hear what your thoughts are as to why this might be the case. I'm not sure if anyone out there has any ideas, but I wanna open the door for you all to be able to leave those comments behind down in the comments section. It might be the understatement of the year to say that comics are hot right now. And honestly, we could probably say that just about every collectible out there from sports cards to trading cards to comics are extremely hot. All of these things are seeing some surges in terms of values. 
And there are folks out there that really specialize in buying the dip. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a stock or a collectible, there are folks that like to buy the dip. That is where the value of an asset or a collectible declines and that's when you buy it because you believe that it's actually going to increase and that is somewhat difficult right now when it comes to collectibles there are some estimates out there that say that comics have gone up over the last year 50 to 100 percent not a whole lot of dips when everything is moving in the upper direction now with that said our next blogger has done a pretty solid job of identifying a couple of books associated with one specific character that may be experiencing a dip and could represent a great opportunity, potentially if things go on the upswing again. And we are specifically talking about Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Right now, her comics are experiencing somewhere between a 20 to 50% dip, decline in value. And again, this represents potentially a great opportunity for you to snag an awesome book. And in this blog post, which is linked down in the description, our blogger identifies several books that you may want to check out. Our next blogger and his wife actually have an affinity for bombshells. And we are specifically talking about bombshells drawn by Aunt Lucia. The blogger in this post does a really solid job of kind of sharing with us some anecdotal stories of how he and his wife approach Ant at various cons and how they meet up with him year after year after year to get him to sign different collectibles that they have in their collection. But the blogger also spends some time talking specifically about some comics that you might be interested in if you're into bombshell type pinups. We are specifically talking about DC bombshell variant covers and there were 21 of these covers that were released back in the day and 20 of the 21 covers were actually done by Ant which is short for Anthony and a lot of them really centered around a couple of books specifically Flash issue number 32 Batwoman issue number 32, Aquaman also issue number 32, and then Batman issue number 43. Fresh off the covers that were released during the new 52 run, Ant and a few other creators rolled over into an ongoing series to kind of continue making some magic happen. And if you aren't familiar with this ongoing series, you definitely want to check it out. And our blogger actually highlights one of his favorite covers, which happened to be DC Bombshells issue number one. And he says that that is by far his favorite cover, but also highlights the fact that issue number five isn't bad either. One of the great things about these bloggers is that they bring to the surface a lot of really awesome books that maybe we overlook. And that is definitely the case here. These, these covers are definitely popular, but I have a feeling that there are some folks out there that don't have some awareness of this. So again, I kind of salute the bloggers for doing a really great job of highlighting some awesome books that we can check out. This blog post, like all of the others, is linked down in the description. So a lot of folks believe that Kevin Feige is laying a foundation for introducing the young Avengers into the MCU, possibly as a movie, but also potentially as a streaming show as well. And some of the pieces, some of the characters are already in place with others that may be coming soon. One of those characters that a lot of people are anticipating will be part of this young Avengers team is America Chavez. America had her first appearance in Vengeance issue number one. And over the past year, about 47 copies of this book at a 9.8 have been sold on eBay. And during this time, the value of this book has increased by 44%. And according to Go Collect, the current FMV of this book is $620, but that actually pales in comparison to the values that are being seen with the variant version of this very same book. When you dig into the data, what you actually see is that the variant has an FMV of $1,750, and it represents 
a 143% increase year over year. And if you have an opportunity to pick up this book, whether it be the regular book or the variant, might not be a bad idea, especially if you believe that the Young Avengers are going to make their way to a large or small screen in the future. In addition to America Chavez's first appearance, the blogger also talks about a few other books that you may be interested in. When it comes to the character of Rogue, there are a couple of books that are at the top of everyone's list. When they think about Rogue and they think about buying comics associated with her, what readily comes to mind for a lot of people is Avengers Annual Issue Number 10 or Uncanny X-Men Issue Number 158 or 171. But would it surprise you to know that Rogue's second and fourth appearance were actually in a ROM comic? I don't know if a lot of people actually know that. And to be honest, it wasn't until about nine months ago that I had this discovery for myself and immediately went hunting for these books in my collection. But there are rumors that Rogue is going to appear in the MCU, specifically in the Captain Marvel 2 movie. And if that happens, the books that are associated with her could actually increase in value. And in this blog post, our blogger talked about three books that might be underrepresented, undervalued books that you may want to check out. We are only going to talk about two of them, specifically Rogue's second and fourth appearance. Her second appearance happened to be in ROM issue number 31. And at present, a CGC 9.8 copy of this book has decreased decreased in value by 19% over the last three years. And I have to highlight here that there are 57 copies of ROM issue number 31 on the census. And you can in fact pick up high grade raw copies of this book for about 15 to $20 on eBay. When we look at ROM issue number 32, her fourth appearance, what we see is that there is actually very little sales data associated with this comic. And in fact, when you look at the CGC census, what we see is that there are only about 22 copies of this book on the census. Again, the great thing here is that the 9.8 copies of this book have also decreased in value, and you can also pick up raw copies of this book for about $5 to $10 on eBay as well. If you believe that Rogue has a future in the MCU, the books that are referenced in this blog post could represent some solid opportunities. And again, I only talked about two of them. There are others referenced in the blog post. Check it out. This next blog post is the first in a series of posts that are going to come out looking at surprising changes to a comic's FMV, specifically the fair market value of a comic. And whether the FMV is, is increasing or decreasing might be a sign of a book that maybe you need to sell or potentially you need to buy. And so the blogger actually looks at, in this very first post, a book that has a surprisingly hot FMV. And we are specifically talking about the first appearance of the Morlocks and Callisto. And the blogger makes a compelling argument here for why this book has a high FMV and why you may want to think about picking it up because even though it has a high FMV, the dollar amount isn't incredibly high. So people are not priced out of this, but again, it could represent that there is some potential here. When you dig into the data of Uncanny X-Men issue number 169, what you see is that a CGC 9.8 copy of this book has increased in value by nearly 57%. On March 7th, a 9.8 copy of this book sold for $200. And you contrast that to a sale in 2018 where several copies of 9.8s actually sold for around $100. And so again, this represents a nice increase of this book. 
And the blogger again makes an argument here for why this might be the case. And one of the first rationales that the blogger puts out there is that this book has multiple first appearances, multiple shots on goal, multiple opportunities for Kevin Feige to pull one or more of these characters into the MCU, thus increasing the value of this book overall. As always, I want to encourage you to check out this blog post take the data in, let it wash over you, noodle it for a little while, and then decide if this is something that you want to act upon. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another recap. And my question to you is, have you determined what the theme of this video has been? If you haven't, it was all about women. And we are wrapping up National Women's Month and we definitely wanted to take a moment to kind of celebrate. And to that end, every single blog post that we spoke about was focused on women. As always, I want to encourage you guys to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind if you enjoyed this video. And certainly, I want to encourage you to tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.